Hello everybody and welcome back. This is going to be our third video on common array methods. The first one was on mutators which changed the array. The second one was on accessors which did not change the array. This third one is going to be on iterators. Array iterators are methods that allow you to iterate over the array doing something with each item on the array. Now we used to have to do it this way and sometimes people still do it this way. Let array one equal one, two, three, four, whatever. We used to do, and again, some people still do this, they use a for loop. For let i equal zero, i is less than array one dot length, i plus plus, and then, um, I don't know, console dot log array one at the i position. Oops. That's what I want. And it'll loop through and log it. So that's that's one way to do it. And that still works. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that except that it's annoying to have to write all that out. And sometimes that can get a little bit difficult whenever you're writing code and you have a lot of stuff inside of here. It's just it's just a little bit harder to read sometimes. Because I don't necessarily know what this for loop is doing. I don't know if it's nested inside a bunch of different stuff or have this massive code base. I may or may not know what in the world this array, this for loop is doing. Fortunately, we have better, cleaner, faster ways to do it now. Um, there are two methods we're going to talk about that are going to allow us to easily iterate over, over an array doing something with each element. There are more of these, there's a lot more of these, but these by far are the most useful and they're also the easiest to understand. We're not going to get into the more advanced ones right now. If you're interested and you enjoy this kind of stuff, feel free to look them up. So these two are for each and map. And both of these are higher order functions. If you remember, higher order functions are functions or methods that take other functions as inputs. So we have our array one. It's just one, two, three, four. And let's talk about for each. Array one dot for each. And what this does is this simply takes a function as an input, and it will do whatever is in that function for each item. So I always recommend you use an arrow function. So for each, and then right here you can give it a name, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but each item inside the array is going to be passed here one after the other. So because this is an array of numbers, you might call it num, you might call it number. So for each number, do something. Uh, let's just console.log the number. So for each number, console.log number. Go. And there, it did that. You might use this to add up the numbers of an array. So let count equals zero, and then array one dot for each. Now let's this time let's change it up. Each item, we're going to count plus equal item. And this will just add on each item to count. And then let's call count. Now it's ten because four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a very clear way to let yourself, your future self, and any of your colleagues know what you're doing. I am taking this array, and for each item in the array, I'm running this code block, whatever's between these two curly braces. For each is wonderful. You will use it all the time, especially when you start doing the full stack type stuff, because a lot of times on the back end, you'll need to build pages that have, for example, comments or Facebook comments or something like that, or posts. And for each post in this data set, create a little, little post card display thing. So it's, that's one possible use case. Let's also talk about the array.map, which is very, very similar to the for each, but instead of just running a piece of code or a block of code for each item in the array, it returns a new array that results from calling the function on each element of the array. So I know that's a little, little out there, so let's give an example. Array1, let's just call it again so we can see it. Array1.map. And it's the exact same, you pass in a function, again, I'll name this number for now. And then we're going to return something. Return, I don't know, number times three. What this will do is this will give me an array. So let's uh, let x equal, it will return me an array with each item in here, in this original array, multiplied by three. So if I call x, now I have three, six, nine, twelve. So that, and that's what map does. It simply takes a function, and you could define this function outside if you wanted to. It's just best practice, generally speaking, to define it right there because you're never going to use it again. And just whatever you return, 
is going to be plugged into here. So it gives you that num. So the first time it went through, it took one, plugged in one here, and returned one times three as the first item in this array. Then it took two, plugged two into here, and returned two times three as the second item in the array. It took three, three times three, four, plugged it in here, four times three is 12. That's how the array.map function works. And you can do a lot more than this than just simple math. Um, let's let number nerd equal array one dot map. I'm passing a function number. Um, let's just do, I love number, the number plus number. And notice the shortened ES6 arrow function here. And if I call number nerd, it gives me an array. I love the number one, I love the number two, I love the number three, I love the number four. It just returned, because this returns with whenever you don't use your curly braces, it returns whatever you put in here on the line. It returned I love the number plus whatever the number is. So it returned one, plugged it in for number, I love the number plus one. So I love the number one, I love the number two, three, and four. That's what map does. The difference between for each and map is simply for each runs the code, map returns a new array of items with that code run on it. So they're two different things. They're related, but they're two separate things. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.